In a recent video, I messed up. I recorded some audio clipped and then I had to go through the process of declipping that and cleaning up the audio so that I could use it in the video. For that process, I use Isotope RX and I recently upgraded to RX9 standard. And so we're gonna go through that process again, uh, showing you how to declip something and then improve the audio even further using RX9. So first, here is this clipped piece of audio. This is uh, straight out of this microphone, the SM7B, through the Wave XLR uh, audio interface, but I was not using my normal setup where, uh, where I'm running through some effects to clean up the sound automatically and to prevent clips. I just had the wrong input selected in OBS. And so all the stuff that I recorded through that was coming in too hot because it wasn't hitting any compression. As you can see, the waveform, it's pretty spiky. It, it's hitting the top and it is flatlined. That's really not good. And then after RX, it looks like this, where there's, there's still peaks, but the peaks are at a normal level and um, perfectly usable with compression and things like that. So because this problem was across the entire audio file rather than just one spot here and there, I sent the entire file over to Isotope RX. Quick overview of RX. It is a spectral repair tool, really incredible software for denoising, declipping, removing clicks and crackle, and general audio repair, isolating sounds from other sounds, removing birds and all kinds of stuff. It, you can use this no matter what kind of music or audio you're working with. There's always some sort of use for this. It's a specialized tool, it is expensive, but uh, it is pretty much essential. You need something like this, whether you're working on music, audiobooks, podcasts, anything. The main issue with this particular piece of audio here is the clipping. And I'll just jump to a, a section here so you can see what this sounds like. So there's a bit of background noise that I'd like to remove. That is partly the mic and partly I'm just hitting the mic a little bit too hard or hitting the preamp too hard. And there's certain words that are hitting zero and then flatlining. And then along with that, it's kind of creating a crackle. On the right side of the interface, there are all of the repair tools at the top, then different utility tools and a few measurement tools. So by the way, we're looking at a peak and spectral analysis view right now. And down here on the bottom left, there's a slider for uh, showing the waveform view or just the spectrogram view or the default 50-50, typically how I use that. Mainly for this, we're using the, the waveform peak view uh, because it's, a, it's an issue with volume. We're gonna use the declip module this time. And this brings in a horizontal line that we can drag to uh, determine like a, a threshold for where the declip process will apply to. Basically everything in the, the grayed out area above and below get processed. So we're determining where the clips are. And in this case, I'm gonna to go to minus five. Then it will reconstruct the waveform, find a way to basically turn that down. And then the peaks that are consecutive get reconstructed. There is a makeup gain control. I always end up turning this down a bit. I don't really have a rule of thumb for this, but at least minus three is where I put that. There is this suggest function, which um, can kind of analyze the whole file, figure out where the clips need to be removed and suggest a threshold. I don't do that. I always kind of know where I want things to be. So minus five, minus six, something like that. Uh, if the file was recorded at a low level, but it's distorted and you know the peak level is low, but the there is clipping in it, then you'd put it much lower. There's also a little um, plus and minus button here for zoom. And that can help you just find the, the specific spot where things are clipped. So the way processing works in RX is this is essentially a non real time processor. Choose a setting, you make a selection and you apply that to the file. It is possible to undo that. There's an undo history but the processing is always in series and it's one processor at a time. And 
uh, it basically commits those changes and you see that on the waveform right away. Set this at minus 5.2. I'm gonna select all with a command A and then hit render. Now there's still a few peaks that are above the rest of the content. That's where I'm going to do some processing on just those spots. Basically, anywhere there's some of the larger peaks, and you can kind of see in the waveform or in the spectral view that there's new content kind of above the high frequencies that were already there in the original file. And that's potentially where there is crackle being introduced. So let's just hear this and see what the difference is. All right, so I am back on the Shure SM7B. That one's not so bad, I could probably live with that. But here's the original, same spot. All right, so I am back on the Shure SM7B. And there's definitely some crackle there. Let's just scroll through and find another spot, this one here. That's exactly the same. It's only increasing the volume. Let's play this back. This is a, my first. So the word back, I tend to do it very aggressively. Let's play this back. This and it, it kind of kind of hurts to listen to. So let's fix that. I'm going to use the decrackle module next. We're going to use the time tool to make a time selection and process this. Uh, for the strength, you want to go as low as is required. So something like two and a half to three is fairly subtle. And for extreme situations, maybe you need to go five and above. So let's try three. And for amplitude skew, I'm going to set this to 10. But this is also very useful on the lower side, which gets rid of mouth clicks and things like that. Let's put this on 10. And there's this interesting option, output crackle only. If I preview this, you can hear that there's a bit of that uh, crackly sound. And so I'll render that spot. And it's, it seems like it's barely done anything, but going to be a little less aggressive sounding. Let's play this back. This is a, my first. This is a bit of a slow process, but we're going to select each of these kind of spots where the frequency goes kind of above the natural high frequencies that's already there and then render that spot. And that's gonna bring that down. It's exactly the same. I go back one, before, it's exactly the same. And after, it's exactly the same. It's just a little less harsh. Let's do a couple more. Minus 47 point. The word minus is a bit aggressive. Minus, 40 minus 47.2, a little loud. And there's the noise profile. I'm going to uncheck. All right, so I'm going to process this one here. And there's the noise profile. I'm going to uncheck. And right before that, there's a bit of crackle. And a, a bit of mouth noises. And let's use the amplitude skew set to a lower value, so minus 10. And so it's going to target these um, lower level you know, not targeting the loud sections, targeting the quiet sections, and uh, and just remove that crackle there. And there's the a lot less gross sounding. And let's compare that to the de-click module. So de-click and de-crackle are similar processes, but kind of work on different sounds. And there, and let's try this. And in this case. D-click didn't really adjust that at all. D-crackle is sometimes a more useful tool for removing mouth noises. We can increase the sensitivity, increase the, the click widening, and let's see if this picks up any clicks. It did, and let's repair that. And there, and in this case, I don't think it's really better than the uh, decrackle module. So I'd probably just use the decrackle module. It's a little bit faster because it's just this uh, amplitude slider. And if we're doing a low strength of like, let's say 1.8, we could process the entire project with the decrackle. And for a long file like this, several minutes long, it does take some time to process. 
uh, depending on your processor speed. So this is looking like 25 seconds or so, 30 seconds for this file. This file is, uh, this file is 18 minutes long. So 30 seconds to process the decrackle on there. And this is on a, a Mac Studio with a M1 Max. And just for fun, let's use the output crackle only option. And let's put the strength on 10 and render this. Let's see what happens here. And so this is only crackles. And so obviously there's still some of the voice in there. This is why you wanna to listen to the, these options like the output crackle only or output clicks only option to really dial in the amount and make sure that you're not taking away from the voice. You're just kind of isolating those clicks. I should also mention that one of the reasons I'm using RX9, even though Reaper has spectral repair functions, it just doesn't have the automatic tools like the decrackle, like the declip, uh, which really make this a simple process with RX9. It's much faster. It can do things that Reaper can't. It's one of the third-party tools that I find absolutely essential. So when I'm all finished with the processing, I'll use either save as or export. So if I go to export here, export file, I want wave. I may as well go 24-bit or 32-bit float. It's below zero, it doesn't really matter. 24-bit, hit okay. And where we're gonna save it, we're gonna save it to the same folder and add the extension rx indicating that it's been run through Rx. The save as function is basically the same. It just doesn't give you the option of changing the format. So if you wanna change format, you have to use export. You just wanna save the file in a new place, you save as. You can save and overwrite the original file. I don't recommend doing that. I like having separate uh, source, like raw files and the processed version. And I should mention that once you have Isotope RX, you get access to almost all of the modules as individual plugins. So if I go to my Isotope folder, I've got Breath Control Connect, which is a way to um, stream the audio out of RX into the DAW. Declick, declip, decrackle, DS, dehum, deplosive, dereverb, guitar denoise, monitor, another way to send audio through. Mouth declick, spectral denoise, voice denoise, all these modules as individual plugins. And if I know my settings, I can run them in real time. So I could have set this to minus five and then this to like minus three and then take the decrackle plugin, add that on second, set the amplitude skew to 10 and the strength to like 2.8 and just be done with it. The downside is, look at this CPU. For one track, that's taking 1% of M1 Max processor. That's kind of a lot. And then look at this insane number of plug-in delay compensation that's required, 20,000. That's going to add a delay every time you press play and stop. So not ideal, but essentially you get the same result and you can tweak the sound without having to commit to a new file. It's all in real time but you don't get the option of uh, running this at a higher quality level without adding even more plug-in delay compensation required. And also it's just insane amount of CPU. If there was just a few isolated spots in the project where I need to fix, so if there's just a few parts that were clipped, I could put these on the actual items. So let's say this little section here, I could just put my declip tool on that individual item, just dragging and dropping from the effects list um, or going to the effects chain for the item and just set this to minus five. And that's going to, that's going to fix this item right in the timeline. And this CPU for the plugin is only happening when the play cursor is near this item. So you might find it more efficient to do it that way. Either way, you still need the, the RX plugins to be able to fix the clips in the first place. So that's my process of de-clipping and de-crackling a voice that's been recorded a little bit too hot. 
hopefully this has been helpful. Check out Isotope RX9. Uh, they're not sponsoring this video. I did pay uh, for this version, this upgrade. Links will be in the description where you can buy that and support the Reaper blog. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.